Hey guys, King Gath here with another patch for Sim Settlements 2. This is patch 2.2.0, which I'm calling HQ 2.0, and this is a monster patch. This is probably the biggest patch we've ever made for any of uh, the mods that I'm in charge of, and it is might even be bigger than the 2.00 patch for Sim Settlements 2 itself that came out with Chapter 2. There's so much content in this patch. So before we get into all that, we'll go. I'll go over some of the more exciting features, and then I will point you guys to the patch notes to get the rest. Because literally, there are, we would be here for an hour if I was to demonstrate all the different ones. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get some highlights for you guys, but I'll let you guys go read about them and discover some of them. Because some of them I think will be more fun to find as you're playing with the new content. But uh, before we get into all that, we gotta thank some patrons because you guys uh, help keep the lights on around here, and I am way behind on patron shoutouts. So we're gonna do a few extra today. If I don't get to you today, don't worry, I will get to you in the future because presumably we're going to get on a more regular patch cycle now that this monster is complete so huge shout out and thanks to dan hollow cloudies tacitus kilgore tim hemingway laquette tully emerson purple hat jack space kebab and backseat dak thank you guys all and thank you everybody else who joined up or who's contributed in other ways and some you guys have donated in other spots and really appreciate all you guys because it turns out it's expensive to manage a big online community and continuously pay for servers and all that so you guys make sure that i don't have to dip into my pocket nobody on the team has to dip in their pockets and that is freaking sweet all right let's get into what we've been doing for the past two months because i have missed doing these patch videos it's so fun to show you guys new fixes and what we've been working on little little bits here and there and this patch is uh, a pretty monster thing that uh, has been we've been wanting this in this was all stuff that was supposed to be in chapter two launch but you know we got to keep ourselves motivated so we, we end up setting uh deadlines and stopping ourselves from going too crazy and then we just took some time this summer to kind of wrap up a lot of those things so i'm going to show you some of those things today and we're going to start out with the first thing i think uh, everybody will be excited about and that's more quest content so if you go and talk to jake and you've completed all the other chapter two content you don't even have to complete absolutely everything as long as you've done his side quest sea to glowing sea the next time you talk to him which i, I have in the save so let's see if he's going to give me our new say what do you think jake he looks like he's frozen did i put some sort of weird console command in hey there. there it goes this is a good time. <laughs> he was stuck in a weird animation uh so let's see here why what's this all about well lupe's come up with an idea and it's a pretty good one yep all right there we go so as soon as you get those lines you know you're on the right track i'm not going to start it i want you guys to uh, experience it for yourselves it's pretty cool it's something that uh, took a lot of people on the team a lot of time to get right it required coding art support design voice actor work quest writing it was uh, it was a big team effort and i think the results are really really cool so go check that out it's not a particularly long quest or involved but it unlocks a very cool mechanic that i think a lot of you guys are going to appreciate all right, let's talk about some of the other things this patch does. And uh, also, I guess before we even go into the other stuff in here, because obviously HQ 2.0, we've got a lot of stuff to show you in HQ. Let's talk about Workshop Framework. So Workshop Framework replaces the major workshop scripts that run the settlement system in Fallout 4. Now, there's a problem with the way a lot of mods are packaged on the, on the Nexus and even on Bethesda.net. And that is because by default... The creation kit will try and package up scripts that even are slightly involved with things a mod author may have edited or even looked at sometimes. And so occasionally a mod out there can end up accidentally including a copy of a workshop script. There are also some very popular mods like the unofficial Fallout 4 patch, which also include those scripts. And for people who are not super familiar with load order management, it can be a pain in the butt to deal with. And you can end up with all sorts of weird bugs. So now... The new Workshop Framework update will test your scripts to make sure they are the correct versions. If it detects that there was an overrided version, it will warn you. So you can either go try and sort your load order if you're a power user, or we've released a new patch. It's an optional file on Nexus or a brand new mod listed on the Bethesda.net pages for Xbox and uh, Bethesda.net PC users called Workshop Framework Script Override. And basically, this is a simple mod you install and you go to your mod screen and make sure it's all the way at the bottom. And then basically what that'll do is it'll overwrite any of those other mods overwriting your workshop script. So you guarantee you have the workshop framework versions. 
In general, nobody should be overriding those scripts. There should just be one final copy from Workshop Framework. Workshop Framework has basically taken all the different things that another mod, any other mod might want to change about the workshop system and exposes them as variables that they can do at runtime so that there's no need for competing workshop scripts anymore. That was one of the goals of Workshop Framework. And so now this patch will help with those of you who have run into accidental overwrites or who just don't have the patience for load order nonsense. So that patch I think is gonna be huge. Workshop Framework's got a lot of good fixes in it. Um, uh, there's there's patch notes available. I'm not going to go over them because it's mostly code stuff. But the, the patch, this uh, workshop script, workshop framework script override, and the detection of overwritten scripts, I think are going to be the big new features that everybody can get behind. Especially those of you guys who like to help out on the forums and help people with issues. I'm sure you're you've you've suspected that people have had overwritten scripts, and it's hard to hard to argue with folks about that. So now we have a definitive test for that. All right, so I've shown you the quest from Jake. Let's talk about some of the other big things in HQ 2.0. So one of the things that many of you have noticed and pointed out with HQ is that the admin and security departments kind of lacked any purpose and they could basically be ignored. And that has been mostly resolved. Now I will say overall with HQ, it's going to be a continuously evolving system and it is heavily designed to be added on to. So a lot of these things, when I show you the lists of things that can be done, this is just kind of a drop in the bucket. Not only will we add more in the future, but add-on pack authors have the power to add more as well. And I will be doing an add-on makers toolkit update in the near future so that folks who want to know how to do this stuff can start adding on all sorts of cool content. So let's start with the admin department because that's the one that had basically nothing to do and uh, now has quite a lot to do and it will have it right away. It does not require you to do much to get access to this stuff. Um, so if you go into the admin department, you'll see that there's a decorate option now. There was a decorate option already, sort of. It was kind of buried in the HQ upgrades through the engineering department, but now the things that say decorate should be under admin. All right, next we've got policies. This is kind of a, one of the major features of administration. So those of you guys who have played around with supply agreements and logistics, you're familiar with setting up the logistic team to manage supply agreements, and each one that you have takes five energy. Well, admin has a similar system. They can maintain policies for five energy each. So the more admin staff you have, or of higher stat power, so the more charisma you have in your admin department, the more policies you can maintain. And policies will do a variety of things. They can add things like increase the amount of resources you can spend each day, give your people a wage, you can overwork them, so you can allow the departments to intentionally go in the red, giving you access to extra energy, things of that nature. As you can see right now, I have a, I need to reassign Teresa to my department. So if you ever have this issue, and this is a great yeah, thing to show you guys how to fix, if you ever have this issue where one of your departments shows zero energy, it generally means that an NPC got unassigned from the mechanical thing behind the scenes. So there are are some stuff that's on the HUD that's separate from the mechanical behind the scenes stuff and the HUD is not always accurate to that because we're building a mod. We don't have access to the engine level stuff. So for example, for, for this, for the admin department, it looks like Teresa's technically assigned, but but uh, the game engine doesn't know that, which is why the energy isn't coming up. So if I just go ahead and just enter this screen and then exit again, it should detect Teresa was left in that screen. She'll be made the department head. And then if I wait a few seconds and occasionally, what you'll need to do is pop in and out of uh, command mode. So there you can go. Uh, I've got 10, 10 admin energy, but sometimes when you come into this command mode, it won't be there. Let's see. And yeah, see right now I have none. So th if that happens to you again, exit out, enter back in. There's just a lot of backend nonsense we have to do because you know we're hacking workshop mode to do this. But there it goes. Now it's back up and running. Um, so occasionally you run into little issues like that. That is going to be a thing forever until we make our own engine, which is not happening anytime soon. But uh, now you guys have a quick and easy solution for that. All right, so now you can see how we can build some of these because we have 10 energy available. Um, so for example, just to show you how one of these would work. So let's go to the facilities energy. So facilities department can be overworked by 50%. As you can see up there, I have 55 facilities energy. So when I build this, it's going to explain the policy system. First of all, there's a lot more pop-ups and whatnot that you guys will learn about uh, as you go through this with the new systems. Um, but if we basically look up at our facilities energy, still still says 55. So what will happen here is when we exit out, give the, give the game a, a few seconds to calculate everything. If we pop back in now, hopefully that was enough time, and we go over to our anything in our facilities department, and you can see now we have 82 energy available. So we have 55 we can use safely, and then we get that extra 50% we can use 
at risk of causing disasters, which is another system I will show you guys in a minute. I'm gonna have to jump between a few saves to show you guys everything because there's just so much content in here. Uh, but basically what this will do in the early game is it will allow you to kind of push the limits of HQ to get things up and running faster or until you have a chance to get more staff of the appropriate quality. So this is a an interesting little give and take strategy system to it. There's a whole bunch of these throughout the HQ policies. That's kind of one of their goals is allow you to kind of manipulate the numbers in your favor. And you don't have to use this if it's something that doesn't interest you and that just sounds like a pain. You don't have to use it. For those of you who do like the policy idea, you can actually uh, turn them on and off on command. So it's it's meant to be a strategic system. So if we can come in here and hit manage active policies, you'll see here the ones that you have active and you can view the details about them. It'll give you a pop-up note explaining what exactly they do and you can repeal them, which will disable them and restore your department energy. So you can see up there at admin, my energy went back down to zero usage and now there are no active policies. So you can toggle those on and off as you please. Now the other big new thing for admin will require you to build a classroom and that you can build in the, I'll show you the exact room. I know this is one of those things that until we get add-on pack authors doing a lot of uh, new designs to add, ultimately add-on pack authors will be able to arrange for just about any room to do anything you want. So then you guys will have a lot more options. For now you're mostly limited to the things that we have available and most of our rooms have one particular purpose and it'll be a while before or I'm sure before we get a large movement in the add-on community because I still haven't even released the tutorials officially. So some of them, some folks have access to the uh, tutorials in, in private. And if you're out there and you're looking to start adding content and you want a beta build of those tutorials, I can send you those in PDF form to uh, experiment with and, and I will eventually get them out to the wiki. All right, so this room here, clean upper south offices west. If we clean that, we wait for our room options to appear, you'll see staff training room. So we're gonna select that. And once that's cleaned and we build it, there will be a new training menu under administration. And the training issue, the uh, training options, what they'll do is increase the amount of energy the current staff can produce by doing what we call cross training. So basically we'll make it so that any given department, they'll be able to start using some of their other stats to add energy. So that is gonna be a huge use for the admin department in a great way. You could increase the amount of energy without having to stack this place full of people. I think this will be especially useful for people who are on lower end systems who are on or who are on Xbox where building this place up and stocking it with 100 people is not very realistic for, for system performance reasons. So then some of these admin things will help out with that. Okay, let's go over to, let's pop back into this mode here and let's look at the security department. So security was another one that basically had no purpose. Now at first this place, this is not going to seem to have a ton of new features to play around with um, until you start getting more into HQ and things start occurring. So the biggest role that the security department has now is preventing the attacks on HQ from causing a problem. And you might be thinking, what attacks on HQ? And that is part of the new disaster system. There will now be regular attacks on HQ where different factions will attack HQ. They will attack from the outside. They don't currently come inside mostly because of uh, performance issues and we didn't want to have to deal with the high speed pathing. There is a little bit of combat that can happen inside of HQ and I'll, I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, but uh, most of the combat from those attacks happens outside and after the attacks, depending on the uh, the quality of your security department, we'll determine if any rooms are damaged in HQ or if uh, resources are stolen from HQ. And so the security department helps prevent that. Now we've got two ways you can directly impact that here and then more will unlock as you go and these you can actually set up patrols where security members will wander back and forth on the east and west sides of your hq and these do stack so if you want to enable both of them you can basically perpetually use energy food and water uh, to arrange that so you can see that i don't have any food and water available and one of the things that i think uh, a lot of folks always wonder about was that supply usage on the left and basically when your settlements that you have supply agreements have excess food and water available, they will become spendable resources in HQ for certain missions and whatnot. So uh, ultimately your goal will be with, su with supply agreements is to try and get one set up with any, any of your settlements that uh, you're putting any significant effort into so that most of your bigger settlements that have surplus stuff, whether it be food or water or power or scrap, can submit that stuff to HQ for use for your interesting projects. So that is the uh, security department's new things are gonna be, you just having more of them helps and we've added a whole lot more job security can do, which we'll talk about in a, a bit here. All right, let's go up and uh, 
to the uh, engineering department and I'm going to show you a couple of new things here. So one is the tinker menu. So the tinker menu has a couple of cool things in it. One is a way to reduce fires. So fires are another one of the disaster types that I'll show you in a bit. And then the, the more exciting one is the draft city plan upgrade. So now you can actually send your engineers to a settlement and force them to upgrade a city plan. So you can basically, from the, the presence of HQ, from the safety of HQ, send out squads to speed up upgrades to city plans. And while that might not seem exciting for level zero to one, uh, just know that something like level three, level two to three, takes 30 days in game. So this allows you to bypass this by just spending two days in game and spending some energy, food and water from your department. So this is kind of a way for the end game where, you know, when you've become tired of the loop of waiting for settlements to upgrade, you'll have an option to speed it up if you like. Speaking of which, one of the other things that doesn't show up in my security menu right now because of the state my game is in, because I've already captured most of the settlements. If you have a settlement out there that you haven't captured, that you're aware of, that has NPCs and enemies in it, for example, say Outpost Ammonia before you kill the raiders, or Murkwater before you kill the queen, you'll actually get a mission to send security to go secure that settlement for you. And one more outgoing mission that's worth mentioning for the logistics department, they actually have the ASAM missionary mission, which will let you take a settlement and convince them to join you. And then they have the established new city, which will allow you to send them out to start a city plan. So you have a whole bunch of different things you can do where you can send some of your your HQ staff out into the world to do things. Now it's all settlement related. We do have plans for non-settlement related stuff in the future, but requires a special new UI, which we are still working on. So for the time being, we've limited any of these exterior missions to be settlement related, uh, but they'll be. it's fun to see your settlers wandering around in the game world and doing stuff just the same. So check out those. You'll also notice that we have some new, you're some new menus appearing for logistics and engineering, and those will be things like upgrades that you can do inside of your HQ. So there's some new projects you can upgrade that will either have an effect on HQ itself or on your settlements. So go check out all those menus. Generally, there's one or two new projects for every department uh, just for stuff, just interesting upgrades you can do. And again, this is kind of setting the stage for what add-on pack authors can do, kind of setting setting some examples of what they can do in the same way we often do when we release a new building class or whatnot. We, we include an example, we include one version so that you guys can play with the gameplay and then add-on pack authors can understand what's possible with the whole system. So the same, same kind of thing has happened to all our departments. We added some more, more interesting little things, and they'll be even more available as you build up different rooms in HQ and get more staff. You'll find more little things hidden away inside of here. So I'll leave it to you guys to find all the different things you can do, but just know that every department has got some new little toys to tinker with. All right, let's check out a couple more things in here. So let's go up to the management desk. So we've got a few things to show you up here. We can make our way up here. So if we go to, I'm going to go to the meeting room because there's a couple things to show you here. So in the meeting room, you'll notice that there's a new desk over here. This is a security desk. So previously, the only way to get access to a security department head desk was to build either Aiden's office or the security office. And now you've got one by default in this meeting room, which will make sure you have access to any of the, uh, the necessity, the necessary things from the management desk, such as the ability to assign the department head without having to go into the command mode. There's another thing you'll know, a couple other things you'll notice on the admin desk over here. So the admin desk first has a recruitment clipboard on it. So if you grab this, you'll get this nice pop, nice pop up. This is something that we should have shipped with, but we didn't really think about it right away. I think somebody on the forums or during one of my live streams suggested that it's a great idea. As we have a new weapon where when you have this equipped, it enables that HQ recruitment dialogue. And if you don't have this equipped, that dialogue is disabled. That way you don't have to hit that something else to get access to it. And it actually has wonderful animations. This was done by Neha. Uh, and uh, this will uh, let you uh, turn on and off the recruitment dialogue by just changing equipment of this thing, which after you're done with your initial recruitment of NPCs, you tend to not need that dialogue very often. So this is a nice solution, I think. All right, then we've also got a little flag on here. So the HQ flag. So in some of the rooms, particularly if you did the Allegiance decor in the main hall for some of those rooms, there was no way to change which flag was displayed. It would always display the American flag. And now you have that option to display any of the flags that you've unlocked for settlements. They will also work in the HQ system. So that is available there. The next thing I want to show you on the desks, and I'll show you in, uh, in another spot in another one of my saves, uh, is there's... 
some new options on the manage menu. So if you go down here, before we always had assign leader, dismiss leader, assign employees. Now we've got a manage projects and help department. Now, uh, I'm not going to do any in this particular save because it won't be particularly useful, but these are going to be new options. The manage projects will let you view all the projects your department's doing and even cancel them. So if you're running low on energy, you need to get it back and you want to give them something more important to do, you can do it from here. And then help department is to if you want to personally get involved with clearing out disasters, which are a totally optional system. Uh, that I'll go over in more detail in a bit here. But those menus are available on all of the different department desks. So the two of them are in here. There's one in Mansfield's office, which you build as part of the tutorial. And there are two additional, the logistics and engineering in the comma ray room. And then lastly is the science one, which is in the medical lab, which you build as part of the quest. Is there a doctor in the house? Which I don't think, yeah, I have not done on this save file yet. So all of the desks are now available just by doing the normal normal quest line without having to build specific things. You just go through the quest lines and eventually you'll get access to those desks, which I think will help out folks quite a bit. All right, now the last thing I'm gonna show you in this particular save, oh no, I got two things. I almost, I almost skipped a, a new feature, but if you go to the comma array, you probably always noticed you could use it as a terminal, but that didn't have any purpose. So now if you go and use this terminal, this, is, this system is thanks to Pra, who had a similar system in SS1, if I'm not mistaken, it was the AC maintenance software and now he's built a very cool version for the comma ray here and what this lets you do is optimize the assignment for a particular settlement so it'll list off the settlements we have control of and if we go ahead and click this option here it will come up with this optimal reassignment now in the future we may add additional options to this menu but for now this is what this is going to do and we click this and give it just a second and then we'll exit out of the terminal. We should get a pop-up here. So let's exit the terminal to continue. And now we have the, these options here. Basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna take all of your settlers, all of your plots, and figure out which should go with which. So it will try and take people that have high endurance and put them on agricultural plots, people with high strength and put them on industrial plots. It will also try and do their recreational assignment. So if you have a training plot that matches their stat and they're already not already maxed out in that stat, they will try to assign them to that. So for example, farmers will get assigned to endurance training if you have space, etc. And it will even try and match up some of the SS2 settlers who are in families together. So for example, if you have a multi-person home that supports three people and you have uh, Katie, Julie, and and I'm drawing a blank on the hook, Alex, I almost, almost forgot his name, uh, in your settlement, it will try and put them all together in the same home, things like that. So it's going to basically try and assign things as you would as the player uh, without you having to do it yourself. So you can actually do this with or without progress updates. If you do it with progress updates, it will take advantage of the uh, workshop framework timer system up there and show you the assignment. It's not super uh, accurate with the, with the updates because some of the stuff is chunked out very strangely, not from anything that Prod did, but just the way that the backend code works, that it's not 100% accurate. So it'll just kind of give you a rough idea. And more importantly, the overall assignment, you'll know when it's done so you could go start another settlement. Because this code is so complicated, uh, it is not something, I know some people are gonna be like, well, you should just have the, the default code do the optimal reassignment. Well, the code, it takes so long as you're gonna see it run, that if we had this be the default, we would only be able to run it uh, every couple of days in game and it would not be something we could have running nonstop without it causing just massive Massive script lag for folks. So uh, this is a system that will remain as something that you trigger on demand. We may add it in other forms, something perhaps from uh, the city planner's desk or something, but for now it's going to be at the Comrade. It's a nice little special feature you can get access to. If you ever get a point to a point where it feels stuck and the, the uh, HUD won't update, there is a tool in the workshop framework system. You can get this from the workshop framework holotape, which you can craft at a chemistry station or in MCM. If you go under workshop framework and you go down to tools, there is a uh, force close all progress bars and also reset HUD widgets. One of those can do it. And if, if and that will at least get those off your screen if they're bothering you. Uh, we already have code in place if it does actually get stuck. So sometimes it's just the HUD that's stuck. If the code actually gets stuck, as soon as you reload your save again, it will clear, it will unstick anything. So that's generally, it tends to be the way we write all of our systems is anything that runs for a long time. We uh, force it to shut down the next time you load your save. That way you don't end up in a state where it un becomes unusable forever. But uh, that optimal reassignment, I think you guys are going to be very pleased with that. It makes a huge difference, especially in bigger settlements or in the late game where you're just not interested in doing it. Or even more so for city plans where you've kind of set them and forget, forgot about them, where you want to have them be optimized, especially for production. It's nice to be able to just let the SS2 code handle all that for you. 
All right, so that, uh, oh, I almost forgot. I, I said it twice, so, so there's one more thing, but nope, there is another thing. So one of the things that we had coded into HQ but wasn't enabled to you guys just due to lack of time to create the interface for is a player storage system. So one of the problems with something like plots or in the case of HQ with containers is because you can change out the designs at any time, you can't rely on those containers still being there. Or worse is when you have to refresh things. You know, you imagine you go to refresh a room, like I go to refresh this, everything that was in there disappears. And you can imagine that's very terrifying if you had items in those containers, because look, they, now anything I had put in there would have disappeared. So we have a solution for that. Uh, now I'm gonna just let that room refresh. We're gonna come over to here and we have this container right here. So when I take this, if I click on transfer here, Oh, of course, it's not going to work on that one because that one pre-existed here. Let me find one that was created. We got to find one that was created at runtime. Let's see if there's any in here we can use. Let's see. How about... There we go. Storage. So if you see on a container, it has this storage axis. That means this container is flagged to work with the storage system. And what the storage system does for the player is when you first activate it, you'll get an action or a menu here to choose what kind of storage you want this to be for. Now you don't have to use these. You could just choose simple storage for everything. If you just want like a central container to put everything that you want to put in for yourself. Otherwise this for immersive purposes, I like doing this when I play in settlements, I like to create different containers for each things. Even though I know your HUD, especially if you have something like Def UI, it will already have tabs for this stuff, so maybe not necessary. But for those of you like me who like to organize for immersive sake, you have that option. You can basically establish a container as a certain type. So let's go ahead and we'll make this one our ammo container. You'll see it gets named that. And we'll go ahead and dump some ammo in. So now every time I access this container, container in the future, you see it's been renamed ammo, I can see my rounds are there. Now, if I go to this container here and I also make this ammo, now it is tied to the same virtual container. And the reason that this is valuable is so that if these containers get destroyed, so let's go ahead and refresh this one more time. When I go assign another container to ammo, I will still have access to those items because the that stuff is stored not in those containers. These containers that get spawned as part of the rooms end up just being kind of uh, little interaction objects that let you get access to it. Uh, now we have one more interface, which I'll show you in just a second. I just want to show you the proof that this thing works. Okay, so now we've got these containers and they once again show storage and footlocker because these are fresh versions. So now we can reestablish those as ammo and there you see my 308 rounds are still there waiting for me. Um, now there's one more access point. And we actually have a couple of these where if you started using the different container names and you decided, you know what, I don't want to deal with that or, oh, there was our optimal reassignment complete. So we were we would now be free to go back to the camera and start another one if we like. Um, but if you, and you can see right away, I get sanctuary, some stuff's happening because there were probably some unassigned plots that are now got assigned. Um, but I put a few of these safes throughout HQ. There's one here, there's one right near the front entrance, right next to the fast travel point, And I believe there's a third one, I don't recall where it is. It's probably in the patch notes, uh, but these are called storage access. And if you act Activate these, you can actually access any of those different containers. So if you forget where you put something or you forget which container you flagged as a certain type, or for example, you changed a room design and it no longer has the container you want to use, you can come in here and get access to any of those containers from this one storage point. Obviously, this is not the most immersive thing to do this, but it at least gives you access to those things so you don't ever lose them. Again, that was just kind of a, uh, a quality of life and uh, protective measure because I want you guys to be able to treat HQ like an ultimate player home where you feel safe leaving stuff speaking of which i know there was a bug where in some of the rooms including your player room that jake gave you where if you would exit power armor it would turn invisible and that will no longer happen in here it will be invisible briefly that's just an engine issue with the way some of this stuff is set up mechanically but as soon as you get out completely the, the your power armor will reappear so that you won't have to have invisible power armor hanging out in your uh, player home if that's what you opt to do. All right, let's head to the next save and I'll show you guys some more cool stuff we can do. Um, so the next thing to talk about is the exterior of HQ. So one of the things lacking in the launch of HQ was the feel that you have some presence in the real world because everything was kept inside of this custom GNN cell. So now you can build and take over the outside. As you can see, Malo's out here. I have built up this front area to have some better barricades. You'll also see that there is a, a caravan over here. Let's see who is visiting right now. No, I haven't built all of it. I'm not showing you everything over there. I'd like you guys to have some uh, surprises to be. But it looks like we got quite a lot of people visiting. Looks like we've got Cricket and uh, Doc Weathers. Let's see here. Yeah, Cricket and Doc Weathers are in town. I don't know why, why they're all clustered. This is part of... Uh, 
Bethesda's interesting little caravan system. Um, but it works very similar to the way you would have, uh, you would build this little thing in workshop mode. It uh, is available to place outside of here. And actually, I believe we have this set up to happen automatically. As soon as you get to a certain part in our main quest, you don't even have to force this to happen. So you'll start seeing some visits from the caravans, which I think adds a lot of life. And same with it, adding some of these turrets out here to help defend them so that they're not left uh, facing off for themselves. Now, one of the reasons that the uh, caravan is over here and not right up by the front doors is because this little side area we don't consider part of the constructive area, whereas inside of there is a new room you will find in the construction section that you can actually choose to build things, which means that add-on authors can create alternate variations of what we've done. We've just went very simple. We decided all of our room designs that are outside are very lightweight because we don't want to push uh, push the envelope out here and make the frame rate drop in the exterior because I know uh, you guys have sensitive systems. Uh, but for those of you who are looking for something a little more uh, heavily designed, add-on pack authors, I'm sure, will fill that role very, very soon once we get those tutorials out and you'll start to see pretty elaborate designs outside that are a little more complex than what we did. Uh, delivered. You'll also notice that the GNN logos are all gone, and that is a new cleaning project that's available for the facilities department, so you can really make this place feel like your own. In fact, one of the, th the other things that happens is as you start building out this outside, you'll start seeing decoration options to put up flags that will fly the colors that you choose from the settlement flag system. And the last thing I can show you outside here is that the command mode will actually work out here if we get to the right spot. Um, so if we get a little closer here, here we go, we can go into command mode and eventually the HUD usually shows up. Um, the HUD is, is capable of showing up. I don't know if, whether or not it's a problem. There it goes. Um, so you can see that uh, our department, our departments probably can't detect from out here to start because just again, mechanically how things work. But if you pop inside of HQ and walk out the front door, so I think it's because of that save I loaded without being in the cell. Uh, as soon as you lock back out, it should maintain the departments. Let's see if that works. Otherwise, I've got one more bug to add to my hope to finish for last minute stuff list. Uh, but basically, the this department thing, I think this has been a, a common issue that uh, people pointed out. Oh, and there it goes from C to glowing C. Um, so as you can see up there, we've got uh, our departments. And then if I head back outside here... We should still see those when we come back out. So for most of you, what just happened to me won't happen. That's just because I loaded a save from out here. Um, generally, you would fast travel into GNN, walk out, and it would detect all the departments, and you'd walk out the door. So you can have your HUD up outside, and you can continue to start projects outside, just like if you're in the basement or anything. This is not unlocked immediately. Hey, Whoop. Just in, Let's go ahead and exit out of here. If you ever get one of these radio awesome. systems and you're trying to break free, just uh, tab in and out of... Uh, uh, first person and as soon as the game or as soon as ss2 detects that you did that it will uh, kill the conversation so um, so now you can exit out here you can start doing some projects and this will unlock with a big pop-up just like the office level did uh, as soon as you finish the uh, hq tutorial so i believe it's after you recruit the uh, 15 people if i'm not mistaken um, you'll find out you'll get a pop-up we've tested it extensively uh, once the exterior is unlocked and you'll be able to start building out there as well all right, let's go to the next save so I can show you a couple more things. So the next thing to show, I mentioned this briefly, and that's the ability to cancel projects. So I've got a save queued up with a few projects running so I can show you how this interface works. And then we can go into the final thing in HQ I want to show you guys, which is the uh, disaster system. So if you go, there are two ways you can do this. One is you can do from the management desks where I showed you, where you can click on the manage projects. Or if you go on the command mode under HQ, there's now, in addition to the HQ layout, there is view active projects. So if we run this here and we let it exit out, it will show us first an overview of all the different projects. Uh, whoa, those are some extremely big. <laughs> so right now I've got these things running right now. Um, and then if you exit this, then you'll get a command, a menu where you can cycle through. And this is where you can cancel a project. Now in the future, we may add additional things here. It might be something like uh, get details or maybe some information about how you unlocked it, things like that. But for now, from here, you can cancel a project. It will stop the project wherever it's at and refund the energy and the resources spent on it so that you can use those for something else. So again, the same thing if we go into the facilities desk and we go here and we go to manage projects, it will just show us those projects that the facilities department is in charge of. Uh, and then we can exit out of here. And again, and it looks like they're in charge of all of them. I actually think um, clear out infestation is one of those ones that technically 
is done by the security department, but I think is flagged as part of facilities. I don't remember why, what the, the logic was behind that. Irrelevant. The point is you can cancel projects now, which I think is uh, is pretty cool. And mostly it's it's nice to be able to see all the different projects that you've got running, especially for those of you who want to play without cheating. And once we start getting atom packs and there's lots of different projects going on, it would be really interesting to see what's going on. We also have a new project type that might pop up for some of you, depending on what you build, which are recurring projects where the project will keep running over and over again. And so it's nice to be able to stop those once you get them started all right let's head to the disaster save so this is the big new uh, mechanical thing that was missing from the launch and is a pretty important thing to make hq feel like a full gameplay loop so in addition to being a player home we wanted this to feel like it's a big uh big old gameplay system you can see we got a couple of fires here and mansfield whoa frame drop there uh has got his fire extinguisher my game really chugs when i load multiple saves one after the other if you guys have ever experienced the same it's a good idea to close your game out once in a while because the memory is not good at clearing out so there's actually a working fire extinguisher that the npcs can use and uh, not only can the uh, humanoid npcs use it but even the robots can use it they'll actually just shoot a, a jet of exhaust out of their whatever their attack hands are so the mala will do it out of one of her i think out of her right hand um, and sometimes the NPCs do dumb stuff like that. And that is why you can actually join in on the fun of fighting fires. So if you go into the uh, com array room over here, you'll see we have a fire extinguisher mounted. There's a couple others throughout the building as well. I think there's the one next to all the elevators. And uh, you can actually equip this as a weapon. And it's just like our other faux weapons. It's uh, effectively infinite ammunition. Um, and uh, you do have to reload this one after you shoot 100 rounds of it. But we can go over here and we can join in and see if we can beat mansfield to do it and you can actually put out the fires uh, and it leaves a little bit of ch smoking char that your facilities department will periodically come around and sweep up over time now this fire system is one of a few different disasters and you don't actually have to participate in it in fact i don't trust ai as many of you guys have heard me say like for things like the salvage beacons or the the mark one beacon system in here or even the salvage beacons mod i always do everything on timers and it's the same with the disasters if you ignore a disaster long enough your departments will clear it up automatically now the difference between something like the the salvage beacon timers or the disaster system in this case is there is a cost for ignoring them for a while is that the energy of your department will get used up while the disasters are in place and then as soon as the disasters are finished up they will clear as you can see facility these energy just went back down because the fires were all put out and the game finally recognized it obviously there's a little bit of delay between when things happen and when the hud updates but the so you have a reason to participate but you don't you're not required to so if you if you want the disaster system just as a little flavor to have some action going around it will not force you to be a part of it but if you like participating in some of this and you want to feel like you're helping out around uh, the disaster system is designed to be very active while you're in HQ and then rarely active when you're away. So you're not feeling this pull to constantly come back. In fact, by default, it doesn't even pop up as a quest objective. If you want that to happen, I can hear we've got an infestation, which is another type. I'm trying to follow. I can, we've got some bloat flies in here somewhere. Um, different creatures, like I believe it's uh, mole rats and insects, will periodically uh, make their way, break into HQ, and, and your security team or facilities team, or you can uh, find them and... Uh, Hunt them down. So, oh, oh, I hear one of them. Where, where's he at? Oh, oh, they just pop up. Oh, there we go. There we go. So here's where I mentioned earlier, occasionally you'll see some combat in HQ. And this is the form on the interior. And the reason we did, we didn't want to have the raids inside because the combat can get so intense and having that many humanoids using their complex AI inside can get pretty awful, especially if you have a lot of NPCs. But uh, occasionally you'll get some fights going on. And again, you don't have to participate, but you have the option to do so. Now, the, the helping. So if you want to track these disasters and actually actively help people, if you go to help department, you'll get a list of the different disaster types we currently support. And the disaster system can be injected. So if you are a, a creative person who's good with the quest system in uh, this game, you will be able to create your own disasters. It will require some scripting knowledge, but uh, it is definitely possible. In fact, we have a few more disasters on the wish list that we may add in future patches. Um, so you can see we still have another infestation. It might still be that one, just hasn't updated, but we're gonna go ahead and hit track disaster and then we'll exit this menu. And now we will get a new quest that starts up and it is pointing us to where there are some pests left in HQ that your department has not taken care of yet. So I can see that security energy is being used right now and I didn't give them any projects, which means that they are on the hunt for them. But because of AI being what it is, they may not find them ever. And again, there's a timer, so 
I think any disaster that starts after about six in-game hours, it will just clear itself. So again, it's not meant to be, it's meant more for flavor than for something that you actually have to uh, constantly monitor. Uh, but it does add a little bit of strategy to wanting to make sure you keep certain departments up because one of the things is while a disaster is in play, any room that they're in, it disables the benefits of that room. So whatever benefits the maintenance room was providing are disabled while it's infested with these rad roaches. And so your departments will take care of it automatically, or you can speed things along by going in and hunting these things yourself. If that's something you want to do, you can also, like most other systems in SS2, completely disable that, which is the next thing I'm going to show you guys. So let's head into the holotape. Oh, I'll mention the last disaster type. So we showed you fire and infestation. I mentioned there's attacks. Those will happen outside. And the last type is deserters. So if you spend a lot of time with your meters in the red, so the meters across the top or the meters on the left there, if they're in the red for a long time, you'll you'll start getting people who are very unhappy and they will just go take a break and head to one of the major towns. So they'll head to Bunker Hill or uh, Diamond City or Good Neighbor. Uh, we may add support for other towns in the future where you can just find them just taking the day off of there and you can recruit them back uh, yourself by talking to them and you'll get like a little mini game to play or you can let the admin department handle that. And so having more people in your departments will make sure that disasters get taken care of quickly and that you don't have to do it yourself or you can come in here and turn them off. So as usual in these videos, I'm gonna show you everything in MCM, but this is available in the City Manager holotape as well. So let's go to Sim Settlements 2. We're gonna go to Gameplay and you'll see there's a new disaster section down here and you can turn it off completely just turn off HQ disasters, or you can turn off the individual disaster types. There's one more disaster type that you, the player, are never responsible for, but will start using up facilities energy over time, and that is staff messes. And you'll find just kind of these disgusting clumps of stuff on the ground periodically. Your, your facility staff will clean them up, and while those are in play, you will start to see uh, the chance of disease go up. Now, does Chance of disease is one of those invisible things. In fact, cleanliness is done a little bit differently in HQ than it is in settlements because we don't want it to be like a thing that you're constantly trying to to play with a meter. The whole idea with HQ is to, to do the reverse of settlements. Instead of it being meters you have to fill, it's meters you can fill if you want to optimize your staff. Whereas in settlements, you know, your optimal strategy is to fill everything for the sake of keeping happiness up. In HQ, uh, we didn't go that route. So it made sense that we would do cleanliness in a similar way. So instead, cleanliness, if you have the, uh, if the info HUD comes up, so if we click on this, you'll see facilities load. You can see I'm getting 114 cleaning score. That is just provided by your facility staff. I don't remember what the conversion rate is, but basically the more stre uh, strength your facilities team has, the higher that cleanliness rating will be. And the higher that cleanliness rating, the less likely diseases are to spontaneously occur inside of HQ. And those messes also add to that, uh, or kind of add opposite, they'll add pollution to it. So the messes are something you'll you'll notice eventually, the little gross piles on the ground. Um, and uh, those can be disabled along with all the other disasters. So while we're talking options, let's go in and talk about some of the other new options we've added to this menu. Particularly, we've added some new stuff for HQ as that was the big focus of this patch. So if you go down under the HQ section, you'll see that there are a few new ones. So first up, we've got the department equip workers. So for those of you who want to have manual control over what gets equipped to your settlers, you don't want them to be in the department outfits, you can turn that off here. Uh, mission worker selection, if you turn this on. So for any of you who have done the security mission to secure the office level during the quest, is there a doctor in the house? You'll know what this looks like. It comes up at the bottom menu and asks who to send on that mission. For most missions, this is just happening silently in the background. You don't actually have to manually select people. It just will grab some unbusy people and send them on whatever mission you start. But if you like the immersion of picking who goes or you want to see more people go, like for example, some of those settlement missions to go take out enemies or to you know upgrade the city plan and you want you like the idea immersively of seeing those people there you can turn this on and it will always prompt you with an interface when you start those projects Next, we've got the room construction costs. So uh, this will be on for you guys by default. I have it off because I was testing. And uh, this basically will make it so that when you go to the little room control devices, anything you start there won't cost you anything. Room operating costs actually will not be in the release build because we discovered a major issue with it that will make things very confusing. So you will not have this yes. option, but you will have room construction costs. And when that is off, when you go to one of these room control devices and you choose either upgrade options or the change room layout and you pick a new option for your room 
which I'm gonna give it just a second to build the list. This is effectively the same thing. What I just chose is the is the same thing as changing choose choosing change building plan on a plot. Um, if I pick one here and then I accept it, it should do so without requiring me to pay for it. So you know how in command mode it has those costs and you can bypass those with either going into God mode or using the free build mode from Workshop Plus. With that option, you can actually use the room control devices to start construction without needing to have God mode or anything. So that's another way to go. Uh, for those of you guys who have uh, had bad luck with these room control devices in your playthrough so far, we spent an inordinate amount of time bug fixing those so they work way better. Um, lots of reports from lots of testers, a fantastic public testing team. Um, shout out to you guys. You guys tested 23 different versions of this 2.20 patch to get us where we are today. And thanks to them, uh, those room control devices should be as, as useful as an ASAM sensor where you can count on them doing what you tell them to, whereas in prior to this patch, they were uh, kind of hit or miss. All right. And then the last thing I want to show you guys in the hollow tape is there's a new tool to run while you are in HQ. If uh, you are finding that the numbers, that you're seeing on the HUD don't seem to match what you expect. So if you go under tools and then advanced tools, you'll see there's a new recalculate HQ stats. And if you run that while you're inside of HQ, it will try and analyze all your different rooms, all your different departments and try and catch up all the numbers to make sure that your HUD is accurate. In general, it shouldn't be a thing you need to run, but in fact, it will even run once automatically after you load this patch because there were probably a lot of weird little bugs that have been affecting you guys silently in the background and probably made you think that the HUD was kind of busted and that will attempt to resolve those issues. So if you find that that starts happening to you again as you play, you now have that option to kind of rebuild all those numbers. All right, we're going into the last save, uh, and then I'll let you go. Hopefully, before we hit a full hour on this video, <laughs> it's so much content. And like I said, this is just a fraction of uh, what we added. Definitely go read the full patch notes. There's so much more stuff you guys can learn about. There's a lot, and it's not just um, new features that are, that are in there. There's a lot of quality of life stuff, some little tiny improvements we made to just make the overall SS2 experience better, and tons of bug fixes. In fact, this patch notes were so big, we broke it into a bunch of subsections to make it easier to read and to find the things you want there's uh there's a bunch of quest fixes there are hq fixes there are just other little random fixes we've even got some some tech we got a technical section of just little changes we made to things that might be useful to uh add on pack authors so definitely go check out the full patch notes so there's three things i want to show you guys inside of settlements once we load up this particular save this is one of my let's play saves so quite uh quite busy uh, but we're gonna look at a couple of things so first off is we'll go right over to the left here and uh, I'm gonna run a console command on this particular plot so you can see it in action. But uh, one of the things that people have been uh, wondering about is why they can't get crops to flower and uh, produce food. And now they should do that. So this command, you won't need to run, it will run automatically. Um, and basically it makes it so that you can Sorry, I'm getting distracted by all the combat. <laughs> that you can actually loot these plants just like if the if they were built manually in workshop mode. So now you should start seeing as you arrive in your settlements every every I think it's every 24 hours is the default. It might be every 48 hours. It's whatever the default setting is for the base game. Uh, we use the same for plots that the crops will now be harvestable, assuming that the designer of the plan used the vanilla crop types or I believe the KG Sim versions, for those of you Adam Hack authors who are keeping score, they should work as well. But if you if people created like a static version, they will not work. All right, I'm gonna look up there. All right, the next thing I wanna show you guys is the new incapacitated icons. You can see that there's a new sad icon. I'm sure you guys are familiar with the unhappiness icon. This is very similar, but it's got a little crossed eyes. And that basically means that the settler that's working that plot is currently has so many diseases that they can't work right now. And so they desperately need a disease cure or they need you to build a hospital to speed along their recovery so that their plot can be active once again. I think this is actually probably the cause of a lot of caravan network issues folks are having. And they just didn't realize it is that their caravan person was incapacitated and they didn't realize that. So um, you can solve that again with a, a hospital with a sometimes a disease cure if you either if the settler or the disease is low rating. So some of the uh, the early diseases you get that only have like a minus one penalty, those generally can be solved with the disease cure. Or if you've invested in the HQ science department and updated or upgraded a bunch of cures. I shouldn't say upgrade, I should say discovered a bunch of cures that will enhance the disease cure's ability to cure people instantly. And that can be one way you can solve that. Or like I said, a hospital will make it so that people recover quite quickly. And then those plots will be made active once again. And then of course you have the uh, the 
trigger of just turning off the disaster system if you want. Um, the disaster system, once it's turned off, uh, the next time you arrive at any given settlement, it will try and cure all of the settlers. So if you don't like the, I'm sorry, the disease system, I think I called it the disaster system. If you don't like the incapacitation or the diseases, you can turn both of those things off. Incapacitation itself can be turned off. Uh, but that is probably the cause of a lot of unworking plots that you guys were not able to recognize prior. And uh, now this visual will show it there. And also it will show it as the uh, status when you go to access the ASAM sensor. So the owner incapacitated is a new status we didn't have support for prior to this patch. All right, the last thing I'll show you is pretty simple here, and that is if you go to your map uh, and go to show supply lines, you'll see that the after this patch and you wait a little bit, the supply lines are more sane, less spider webby, um, and that is thanks to Pra, who recoded our entire caravan code system to use a, what's called a minimal spanning tree, which makes a more sane uh, organization of the connections. And this is especially important when you guys start digging into some of the new upgrades that are available to the logistics department and HQ because it changes some of the behavior of the caravan system and so it was very important that we have uh, a way to have a cleaner map where you guys would not have been able to read it at all with some of the new upgrades that are available so that should do it i think that's enough uh talking about this patch i literally think this patch notes video is going to be an hour long so my apologies to anybody who uh fell asleep during this uh, hopefully you moved on <laughs> earlier if you're one of those folks and read the patch notes instead but even then could take you a long time to get through them all um, as i mentioned a couple times in the video the uh, atom makers toolkit will be getting an update as soon as i can um, i already have a beta version of some of it ready to go that i can distribute so you guys can try this out if you want to add more content to hq and just about everything you saw in hq from missions to new room designs uh, to research projects and policies, all of that stuff, even disasters can all be injected. More stuff can be added to the system. Relatively simply, I tried to code everything out in a way that, and added templates for things in a way that people, even with minimal scripting knowledge or a lot of times none. So if you're just a designer and you want to do new, no, new room designs, you do not need any scripting knowledge to add those. Even the mission system, the mission system does not require scripting. It can just be done by setting up a bunch of script properties in a menu so uh, there's a lot that can be done with hq without having a ton of design experience or scripting experience i'm really excited to see what you guys do with that and of course i'll make a big announcement once the uh, add-on makers toolkit is officially updated with all of that content all right, so those of you who've made it through this giant slog, we're up to giveaway time. So every patch video, we're not stopping this. I give away some merch. And since it's been a while and this is a huge patch, we're gonna give away three this time. So I'm gonna pick out three of you guys who leave a comment with a hashtag to get some free merch. So merch for SS2 we've got, uh, and for other versions of SS, we've also got uh, stuff for like Conqueror or SS1. Uh, we've got coffee mugs and notebooks and t-shirts and all sorts of stuff you can pick from. I just give you a gift card to our little online shop. So if you're interested in getting some swag with some settlements related logos on it, just leave a comment down below um, with this hashtag in it and make sure that it has something else. If you just leave this hashtag, I'm gonna skip yours and I won't potentially choose it. But leave me an uh, interesting story about some sentiments too, something funny that happened, something you like about it, something you hate about it, just something interesting for me to read. And you're going to include the hashtag super patch, all one word, because this patch is crazy huge. Um, I, I bet the 3.0.0 patch doesn't have as many notes as this guy does. Alrighty, guys, uh, I need to go get a glass of water because uh, my throat is killing me after <laughs> recording this thing twice to get it to you guys, to even get it to this level, uh, down to this one hour mark I think we're going to end up at. But guys, thank you so much again to all the beta testers who helped make this a reality. I could not done it could not have done it without you guys. Um, you were very awesome about testing version after version after version and about uh, getting me detailed feedback and recreating save files over and over again. Thank you so much, guys. And thank you everybody who's been contributing to the project. This is such a fun thing to be a part of. Um, I can't wait to see your guys' reaction to HQ 2.0. So please go play it. Let me know what you think. And uh, I'll be back on Wednesday for my live stream to play it myself in front of you guys. But I wanted to give you guys a few days to try it out yourselves. All right. All that said, take care and enjoy the mods.